watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello and welcome to ShopRite's Be the Media program. My name is Chuck Joseph and my family owns the ShopRite of West Hartford. In this segment, you'll see local stories about our community as told by local residents of all ages. As a resident and business owner in West Hartford, our ShopRite team is proud to support Be the Media. My family opened our store with the mission to have a positive impact on the community, and we are pleased to share that mission with you today. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the show. having a tech recycling event sponsored by Green Monster and the West Hartford Chamber of Commerce. Okay. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. Get a man. We have events like this uh, on a regular basis when they become opportune is when we like to do this, help the community out, try to mix it up throughout the year uh, with different types of events. <laughs> all these items will be broken down into their individual components. All the higher drives will be removed and wiped and cleaned and destroyed. And then each of those individual uh, uh, components will be taken and recycled and it will be kept out of the, uh, the environment so you know, some of the hazardous materials there won't affect the, the environment, keep the environment cleaner. Aaron Tracy came up with the idea of uh, trying to provide a recycling event for the community because a lot of folks have a lot of technology and electronics and they don't know how to responsibly get rid of it. Halloween arrived a few days early in West Hartford as dressed up children and parents attended the annual Halloween stroll sponsored by the Moms and More Club of West Hartford. Kids were able to trick-or-treat at participating merchants throughout Bluebeck Square, as well as enjoy activities such as face painting, a beanbag toss, and even some live, kid-friendly music. for community television caught up with a participating merchant, Norris Cupcakes, along with some stroll attendees, including the Voice Season 1 winner, Javier Colon. I am a cupcake dealer here at Nora, so luckily today we are featuring a lot of our favorite Halloween flavors as well as some of the classics down there. And then I bake as well, so I was in the, the Middletown kitchen. Yes, so the Halloween ones tend to draw the eye today, so for example, the Nom Nom down here is one of our baker's favorites and this year we made it Halloween themed so we have the spider web on top. But this is just a favorite all around any time of the year. In fact, our store, I've never seen so many people in our store. Oh, it's been nice to be part of it. I uh, found out about the event from my friend Rachel because she loves doing things in West Hartford. And um, it took me a little while to pick out his costume, but I feel like it's his first Halloween. You know, you got to do something that has to do with pumpkins, Halloween, fall. You know, it's a cute first Halloween costume. So, and there's lots of, you know, fam family friendly stuff to do. So, uh, we've been trick or treating. We went, um, we were here early, 9 30. We went to the town hall event, um, just saw like the events go on. It's tough because he's little, but. 
Yeah, um, so far it's been fun. This is your first time at this event? No, this is a, uh, we we come here uh, we come here all the time. I mean, this is uh, you know, having having three little ones. We're we're here uh, a bunch. We almost missed this morning. We see you know what we can't miss. We can't miss this. So here we are, and we are uh, we are happy to always happy to be here. We love our community. You know, you have kids that are that are uh, you know interested in grabbing as much candy as they as they want, and uh, that's that's one part of it. But obviously, you know, just the community aspect of it. I mean, you've got coloring here. You've got uh, folks putting little streaks in 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 uh, hair over there, and a little area where you can where the kids can play with with little corn and you know put their little boats and stuff in it. It's it's just it's something great for for families. It's great for. Um, um, you know, to take the kids out of the house and, and, and do something. So as long as it is here, uh, we, will, uh, we will keep coming. Happy Halloween. But thank you very much. Um, I want to introduce Dave Taylor. Dave was here last year as well, and he will talk a little bit more about the United Way and how our donations go so long, so far in our community to help those in the most need. So thank you, Dave. Good morning. So every year we create a campaign video, and we go back and forth on different kinds of themes, different kind of motifs, different spokespersons. Some years it's a real sad, Curie eyed one, and some years it's happy and joy, joy, joy. Well, this year we changed it up, but this year we decided it was time to get a different perspective to explain United Way in the terms that only a kid could understand. So we have a spokes kid this year, a nine year old named Priya, who's going to, as she says, she's going to break it down for you. <laughs> to try to get better. So she couldn't pay rent, 
and got evicted. You see how these things are connected? We need to get our whole life back on track. That's the United Way. All right, you see these pieces? Let's say this piece is the mom and her family. So let's put this here. But this is just one piece, and this game is made up of a lot of different pieces. Just like the cabinet. To turn this into a thriving community, it takes a lot of work. So United Way breaks up this work into three steps. First, they organize all the pieces, like donors, advocates, nonprofits, governments, and volunteers. United Way connects all the pieces together. And third, it puts everything into motion. The United Way connected all of these pieces to help this woman. And with all of this help, she'll be able to take care of her family. And get this, United Way does this for families throughout our region every day. When everything is working together, cool things start to happen. I mean, it's pretty awesome. You know what else is awesome? Helping one person in your community is like helping everyone. When someone gets a job, they can pay rent and buy groceries. That helps local businesses. She can also pay taxes. Those help pay for streets and schools and stuff. It goes on and on, it's all connected. And don't forget, kids are a big part of the connection too. When we're doing well, the whole community is doing well. And when the community is doing well, life is pretty awesome. Okay, now you know what United Way is all about. That wasn't so hard, was it? Neither is helping out. And there are three really easy ways to do it. Number one, dig in your pockets. Number two, tell your friends. Number three, Roll up your sleeves and volunteer in your community. Join our team and we'll put together one heck of a good looking community. That's how we live united. So I'm going to tell you a quick story that hopefully illustrates the power of United Way for one particular family and how it works for most families in our community. So this story starts back in 2007. A mom and her two children, six-year-old Naeem and two-year-old Brenda, are living in New York City and they're having a tough time. In particular, mom decides the best thing for her family and their future is to get away from their family and relatives. Because most members of their family and relatives are not doing well either. They are bad influences. So mom makes a momentous decision to pick up, take her two children, move from New York City to Hartford, Connecticut, where she knows <coughs> no one. So she gets to Hartford, gets temporary housing, and immediately says, I need lots of help. Where do I go for help? She asked her new neighbors, and they say, you need to dial on your phone, everybody together, 211. What we used to call info line. She calls 211 and says, I need lots of help. Here's what I need help with. And number one, can you direct me to a mentoring program? <coughs> My son needs a role model. He's six years old, and I'm really concerned about the direction in his life. So they direct mom to Big Brothers Big Sisters. So mom picks up the phone, makes some phone calls, gets the paperwork started from Nutmeg Big Brothers Big Sisters in Hartford, gets the application process moving along. And a few weeks later, she comes in for her in-person interview to get her son, Naeem, enrolled in the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. So the interview takes about an hour and a half. It's a very thorough process. And at the end of the interview, mom's sitting there with Yadira, the case manager, who's been asking all these questions. And they get to the end, and he dear says, okay, now I've got the good news, and I've got the bad news. The good news is, of course, your kid's accepted into the program. He's eligible. He's the kind of kid we designed the program for. Okay, Yadira, what's the bad news? Well, the bad news is there's already 85 boys in the city of Hartford already on a waiting list to get a big brother. And it's going to take about two years 
for your son to get matched up. At that point, mom freaks out. For about five minutes, she cries hysterically. And then that turns to anger. And she literally starts picking up things off the table and throwing them at Yadir. She is so angry at the idea of two years for her precious son to be on a waiting list. So the other staff members come in and common order is restored. And uh, your dear <coughs> says, okay, mom, what are we gonna do now? Mom thinks about it for a minute or two and says, well, I guess you're gonna put him on that waiting list. And you're gonna do your best to find a mentor for my son. And every night after I put my kids to bed, I'm gonna say a prayer for a miracle because Two years is forever in his life. Two years, my son will be gone. So, a couple of months go by, mom keeps saying her prayers for a miracle. Big brothers, big sisters keeps working on volunteer recruitment as they always do. And so this is the fall, it's now February, early February. And the miracle has started to happen already. In that a young man named George, with his degree in hand, his engineering degree, he's from Indiana, I believe, he gets a job at Hamilton Sunstrand in Windsor Locks, Connecticut. Comes to Connecticut, he moves into Park Place Towers on Laurel Street in Hartford, which happens to be next door to the United Way building. <laughs> so George comes, George is a really good guy. George had lots of people helping him along the way. He had lots of role models, particularly male mentors in his life to get him to where he is. And he wants to give back to the community. He didn't just come here for a job. He wants to be part of the community. He wants to volunteer. And he talks to his new neighbors and they say, yeah, we, we can help you find volunteer opportunities. And I think you'd be a great big brother. And George says, yeah, I've always been interested in that work. And where do I go? And they say, you just have to walk across the driveway into that little brick building there at 30 Laurel Street. In the United Way building on the third floor is the Nutmeg Big Brothers Big Sisters office. You need to go there immediately. So George does that, walks across the driveway, goes in, gets his paperwork filled out, starts the process. Again, very thorough, very careful, safe process. Background checks and all of that to make sure George is who he says he is. Of course, George gets accepted and now it's like, okay, who gets George? George is amazing. George is going to be a wonderful big brother to some child. And of course, the case managers compete and make their best case. But it turns out his profile is so perfect for Naeem that that's the match that gets made. Now, a week and a half later, they meet for the first time. And they are amazing friends right from the first minute they talk to each other. They spend probably twice as much time as they need to. Four hours a week is what's expected. They're spending eight hours a week. And it's not just fun and new adventures for Naeem. This is new stuff for George. He's doing things he hasn't done probably in 15, 20 years. They are learning and growing together for that first three months. Then there's a goal setting process that's required by Big Brothers Big Sisters. So three months into the relationship, Dawn, the math support coordinator, picks up the phone and calls George and says, what are the goals of this relationship? Where do you want to take this in the next nine months and hopefully the next three or four years. George thinks about it and he says, well, academic achievement. We want him to get good grades. We want him to succeed in math and science, improve his reading skills, all very good things. But we also want to have some fun. And I want to teach him how to play soccer and how to play baseball. And we're going to learn to hike and fish and all that kind of good stuff. Good stuff. Dawn then picks up the phone again, calls mom and says, mom, what are the goals of the relationship? What do you want out of this for your son? And there's silence on the other end of the phone for about a minute. Dawn thinks that maybe mom's walked away. <laughs> and then this whisper comes across the phone and mom says, the goal of the relationship is in his name. And Dawn whispers back, what about his name? Naeem, that's a nice name. What, what does that have to do with goals of the mentoring relationship? And mom says, Naeem, N-A-I-M stands for not another incarcerated male. Mm. I made up that name because of what I wanted for his life, for him not to grow up like the male and female relatives, aunts and uncles and grandparents in his life back in New York City. When you told me two years, all I could think of is it's gonna come true. 
Everything that I fear most is going to come true. He's going to go down that path, becoming another incarcerated male. But because of Big Brother's Big Sisters, now almost nine years later, and Naima is probably about 15 years old, they still have a mentoring relationship, still have a quality role model for Naeem and a wonderful friend for George. Now, before you get your pledge form and say, okay, I want all my United Way dollars to go to Big Brothers Big Sisters, that wouldn't be what Priya just gave us that message because it's about a community. It's about lots of organizations working together to help people get their lives back on track. Remember, mom started the process by calling 211 which is a United Way supported and funded program. In addition to Big Brothers Big Sisters, she needed lots of other help. She also got referred to the Village for Families and Children, which provides marvelous counseling services that she and her kids needed. They also directed her to better permanent housing, which they received direction from the Salvation Army, another United Way partner, funded organization. They needed food. They needed to know where the, the food banks were in the local area. Food Share, another United Way partner. And there were several other organizations. In most cases, families need more than just one-stop shopping. They need more than one organization to get their life back on track. That was true of this mom. That was true of the mom that Priya talked about. That's what United Way is about. Organizations and agencies working together. We have 60 partner organizations. I will make sure that Conchetta and Denise get that list so that you see this variety of issues and organizations that support your local community. People like the mom Priya talked about and the mom that I just presented to you. I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. Again, thank you for your amazing generosity, your amazing spirit. I wish all organizations kicked off their campaign like, like this, although I'd probably be exhausted, but that's okay. <laughs>